Okay, this is going to be a full review, overview, everything. Part two of our adventure camping overland setup. So, we have a trailer. Um, just go ahead and get that out of the way. There's a full build video that's going to be linked down in the description. Um, possibly up in the corner. Um, just to give a reference of that part one, phase one, and that's all before the modifications will touch base in this video. So, vehicle is a 2011-2500 Z71 package. It is the gas engine. So, um, there's not many modifications. Um, I have the SS3 Diode Dynamics Fog Light conversion. I have the SS3. Um, they're the driving. They're basically equivalent to your high beams. And then we just got the C1, I believe they are. Um, that's in a wide. And all three of those are street legal. Um, they're also the sports. So we are a Diodynamic Ambassador. Um, the code will be down in the description as well. It's land to sea. It'll get you free shipping. We do earn a small commission. Um, but what we really like about Diode is they have three different tiers of lights. So you have the sports um, and then the pros. And I believe there's one more. There might just be two. Uh, it's been a while since I refreshed myself on that. Um, but these are all the sport lights. So, under the hood. So, the only change under here, we did the SMB cold air intake. And then we have the X2 AGM battery. It's the 76 amp hour deep cycle battery. Um... There's no accessories connected to it except for one wire. So our setup, at one point I ran a dual battery with the isolator. We started noticing voltage issues with some of the accessories. We'll get to in just a minute. Um, so over the winter I made the switch to a full Red Arc second house battery with a BCDC instead of the isolator. The one great thing about the isolator though, um, we had the jump start switch. So if for some reason the main battery was flat, we could jump ourselves off. Nowadays with NOCO and companies like that around, I switched to a jump pack. And then, um, so this space is open because it's the gas. We have the second um, battery tray. Really the only thing left that we have plans to add to the truck. Um, there's a company called Moore who makes an air compressor mount for either the Vivair or the ARB compressor and tank. And that would mount there and then run off the main battery. So... That's really the only change under the hood. Um, the bow tie was peeling, and so a little cosmetic upgrade. That's from a company out in Texas, but it's a retrofit for the new 3D style off the 2019 truck. Um, ditch light brackets are off Amazon, so same lights on this side. But then we have the Midland antenna for the GMRS radio. So we are trail guide um, ambassadors for Onyx Off-Road. And as you can see, we have Onyx branded. So most everything has been purchased through the Elite membership. And we do have a code for some of those as well. Um, the suspension we upgraded, it's hard to see. A while back we did the Fox 2.0 um, remote reservoir. Um, the truck has 150,000 miles, so roughly there. 
um, we replaced them. Notice the rack was bad. We just got the Falcon Peak, uh, the Falcon Wild Peak AT4Ws, and they're in a 33 by 10 and a half. There is no level of lift. That was the biggest tire that we could get for leveling it, um, and that just brings a whole new complication with this body style truck. So still have the factory rims, and then the 2.0 remote reservoirs. Those have greatly improved the ride quality, especially with towing. The tires, we probably have 5,000 miles on the tires now. Um, the wet performance has been great. Um, wet mud, um, wet roads. That's really most of where I've driven so far. So I'm going to jump into the interior. So I have the scan gauge too. Um, that just helps monitor the battery voltage. We do have a voltage gauge because it's the heavy duty truck, extra gauges, but it's nice seeing it, the actual numbers. We have the intake air temperature, miles per hour, and then current miles per gallon. Um, we have the Silverado Bulletproof Mounting Solutions bracket. Um, and that's mounted to the factory points. We've got the phone holder, the spare USB, and then the Midland radio. So the actual like brain to the radio is actually mounted behind the upper glove compartment. And then the wire runs through. I took out the cigarette plug and added a dual USB. So the nice thing about the house battery all of the accessories pull off the house battery, which I'll touch on in just a minute. But all of the accessories, so these are constantly on. That one glows blue, that one's green. They're full power all the time, pulling from the main battery. So we do have the ARE camper shell, and when it's loaded with gear and a few other modifications we did, you can't see out. So we did the wolf box dash cam rear view mirror. So the glass is up right now, but there's the rear view and then the front view. It's constantly recording as you can see right now. Um, but that makes, especially towing at night, you can see everything. I can see the back of all of our trailers um, in the middle of the night. So that's really it up front for modifications. I took out the factory radio and put in a Pioneer with CarPlay, which is how um, most of the time we navigate either with Google Maps or Onyx Off-Road. I have a pair of Onyx work gloves and a hatchet and the driver pocket, passenger pocket's empty. So moving to the rear got uh, reusable grocery bags. This is mostly a day, daily driver. Um, seats we keep folded up. One camera bag in here for this trip and then the Yeti Go box with electronics. Um, it's the one-third, two-thirds seat. Um, one of the things we did, which you and get a better view now. So I got the Vertex off-road leather seat covers. We did have cloth seats to begin with. That is probably one of my favorite upgrades. Bringing the synthetic leather to the car seats has just changed more of that feel. It, it feels like it can take more of a beating. Um, it feels higher in than the cloth that was always a pain to clean. You can see one of the seats is missing. We'll go around there and check that out. Okay, so we're now on the passenger side. So I just finished building this um, a few days ago. So it's three quarter ply, sandy ply from Home Depot. We took out the um, one third jump seat, decided to build a storage cabinet um, 
charge everything. So eventually, if it hasn't come yet, there'll be an Anderson plug in the middle so we can disconnect this. But that's 10 gauge wire that runs to the house battery. And that powers our charging station. So there's a 12 volt USB strip mounted underneath this subfloor. And in there is our Canon chargers. There's a GoPro charger, the DJI drone. I've got a Garmin watch cable just loose. And then over on this side, I put down just some foam just to soften stuff. This battery finished. Um, down bottom, a Nanook case is what we kind of based it around. That's the drone, the drone, the GoPro, but it's just open storage for whatever might have for the trip. On the back wall, it's taken down right now, but the first aid kit attaches to the molly panel. We got some bug spray and then portable mic um, when somebody hops out to spot or help back up a trailer, anything like that. It's easy to grab out the passenger window when this rolls down. Um, in this space, so I built a back panel, same material. Down here we have the um, silky saw that is, of course, Onyx Trail Guide branded. And then a pair of work gloves and then the tripod. And whenever I designed it, I elevated it. So we've got any tools, um, impact gun if we get a flat. And then the front bag is Rhino USA snatch strap and soft shackles that they sent um, over our way. Um, luckily, haven't had to use it yet, but it is easily accessible when the time comes. Keep moving back, finish off some lights. We have, these are the only lights that are not diode. Um, hopefully one day they'll make some camp scene lights this style but those are just 3M adhesive up there and then um, there's one on each side so that brings us around to the rear so there's a wooden drawer system that um, my dad built a couple years ago um, with these drawers and We've kind of modified them once we got the vehicle to fit our camping needs. But there's two drawers that pull out. So driver drawer has a water fill and then the water tank. And I'll show that more in depth in a second um, and also how to fill it. But we have just open storage. It's a little messy right now in camping, but open cook storage and then the sink and everything folds down and then back here at the back um, got a nice cutting board and then under here is where the Eureka stove and the jet boil go and depending on the situation it's either prep surface we can cook there but the drawers this hose just tucks in the door rolls up and just locks into place the water tank we have the fill it drains a little back just the the little bit that was in there but the whole tank won't rush um this is a two-way switch like i showed earlier so we are at three quarters of the tank down is just the gauge and then if you flip it up it turns on the pump so then the other drawer we have just gear storage um, hiking poles spare backpack really just there's a bunch of hammocks in there and we have a whole pantry area tons of food and then the last thing that's our chef roll by kelty and some paper towels, bags, and then some extra locks. So that is the second drawer. And then part of the Onyx program, we got a discount on Dometic. It's one of the elite memberships. So we picked up the 45 liter 
the medic and it's one of I think the most game-changing camping accessories is a 12 volt fridge so it's been running for probably two weeks now um, the compressor is on so the voltage dropped um, we're sitting at like 12.9 whenever I just checked but it's 36 degrees in there you can reach it pop it open and drinks everything so I'll finish off back here and then go show what's happening at the front which is kind of where it gets a little more complicated but just for reference we have this is for the red arc system we have a shore power plug back here plug an extension cord in um so kind of kept it electrical on passenger and water on driver keep them separate okay so we're now at the front of the truck so the windows in the ARE shell, I did get those tinted. Um, in South Carolina, at least, there was no like legal requirements because technically it's not part of the vehicle. So we went with UV, um, basically limo tint on the sides and the rear door to help with heat levels and just privacy on everything. But under... So there's all these like access hatches, if you can see. Um, under this front one, there's a 30 gallon water tank. And that comes up to, that's the marine bulkhead fitting. So all of these are rubber grommets that got bed lined over. So I just drilled a hole through the rubber grommet. Um, so that's the overflow and then all those hoses and everything run to the gauge and the switch at the rear so this is the brain of our electronics that i put together so we have the red art bc dc 1225d so it's a 25 amp charger we have the garmin power switch that bluetooths to your phone and then the second one is constant power. So that's like the refrigerator, the water pump, um, the cabin, and then the battery charging system is constant power. And all of those are on Blue Sea breakers. So I'm going to put this together over the winter. Um, so the inside, it's a little bit of a mess, but... There's a Red Arc smart battery monitor down there, which Bluetooths to your phone as well. But that was fun to build and figure out how to build something that, um, when it's time for the next vehicle, um, it's easily transferred and upgraded. And that just latches in this case from Amazon. And then like the water, um, everything goes through the bulkhead through one of these rubber grommets and that's what runs uh, loomed up to the engine bay to the main battery which is how the BCDC works but the secondary battery to so the main battery charges the BCDC and then in this compartment we have a 100 amp hour Renergy uh, AGM battery so that's mounted down here in this cubby and then we have the NOCO um, the Genesis 5 amp charger mounted up there on the wall and that's what runs up to the battery um, the battery system in here and then that was that short plug a second ago so the light that comes with the camper shell it had a weird strobing issue and so I went ahead and took the out um you can see the holes where it was but i went ahead and wired in um seam lights like what's on the outside of the car i went ahead and wired those in they're much brighter they do get hotter um and then this one's led angled for when we're cooking you can't be an overlander adventure camper outdoor enthusiast without having patches so we put all of the companies we proudly support um, 
if you have a patch we'll buy it and put it up here so that's most of the companies that offer patches that we either worked with or purchased in the same. And then the other side is everywhere that we've been. So any kind of long trips, day trips, anywhere that sells a patch that we go, we pick up and stick on this side. Okay, so that brings us to the last thing. So this is the Rigged Ultra Swing. And it's the Mega Fit Mega Swing. Um, picked this up a few months back off Facebook for well under half off. And um, if you've seen these, they're um, pretty much an accessory. It bolts into your factory hitch. You can still tow 10,000 pounds with it. Um, they recommend taking off about 50% just to be safe, but it is rated for 10,000. Luckily, our trailer doesn't weigh that much. As far as accessories, so all of this we got off um, the previous owner on Facebook. So it has the, just the standard table, and then it has the um, tanks in the way. It has a cutting board that slides out the full length. Um, but that's the, we got the Eureka stove on there now. This is the propane tank off of the trailer. We relocated it here. And that's on the AT Overland bracket. That's just a simple five gallon or five pound propane tank. I have the BA Tents traction board mount. So these are just some cheap ones. I actually got them from Home Depot. Um, those are mounted on there. There's a video install on that down below also. But that just ratchet straps to the side of the tire. And then one of my personal favorite things is the trash roo hangs off the back. So it keeps all the trash out of the back of the truck when we're riding trails out. Um, there's trash in the road, we can grab it and it's not going in more of our clean space that we have. Um, matching rim. I got that from a junkyard and then I picked up a fifth uh, Falcon Wild Peak. Just as much as we travel, um, not having a full size spare was something we wanted to make sure we had for longer distances. Um, we did take the spare tire out from underneath the car. Not sure what we'll do with that space. Currently not planning to do anything. If for some reason we need to take the ultra swing off and put this tire under there. Um, the only other thing with the vehicle, we have the C2 um, combo wide flood in white off the back to help backing up. There's just one of them because the ultra swing blocks the other mounting point. So that wraps up the whole truck. You can see the, the tent difference also. So we did not tent the front windows so you can still see in here from the cab, but the side windows and then the big glass rear window is tented. takes a lot to be able to see in there. And now we'll turn to the trailer updates. So if you saw the last trailer video, we were in Hot Springs talking about phase two and we completed phase two over the winter time. So a few notable things, the tent is rotated 90 degrees. We now enter off the rear. Um, we found, so at the our stage of life right now we're traveling more to state parks and designated areas based on living along the east coast there's not a lot of wild camping like some of the other states so we put it off the rear and we'll touch on the awning in a minute so i got these toolboxes couple boxes. So we have diamond plated toolboxes that act as our fenders. 
and this side primarily holds the leveling jacks and water hoses and then I got um, rubber mud flaps just to meet all the requirements. We have two hard cases from Harbor, uh, Harbor Freight. So this one holds the geyser shower that Caroline actually got me for Christmas this year. So the geyser shower is mounted in there and I didn't bring it on this trip. And then the front one is open in case um, we have any accessories. So previous trip we took the kayaks. So I put all the um, like the ropes and the tie downs and the paddle leashes and all of that kind of lives in that box. So that was one of the biggest changes in phase two. So I got more of the compact camping concept brackets. I got eight more of them, four on each side. And then the Go Rhino accessory plates. So those are mounted in the middle, kind of filled in the look, filled in the sides. Um, it really gave it that off-road, rugged look instead of the whole side being open. The fire extinguisher got mounted there. It was on the front. Um, I added this insert with just some Simpson strong tie uh, framing brackets. So that's big enough to hold basic five gallon jerry. So I got five gallons of water extra with me. And this will hold three five gallon jerry. So we'll take two gas of water and then there's still some room in the middle um, for some of the leveling blocks of wood that go in there. Everything with the tongue is still the same and then on this side these are starboard um, fishing rod or kayak paddle holders and there's one on each end that covers blocking it now but if we're jumping from fly fishing spot to the next or not taking the boats too far, we can throw the paddles in here. Um, same go rhino plate, used quick fist and put the axe and the camp shovel mounted there. Another box full of tools. And then on the exterior of this plate, I put these standoffs and those are spaced where our traction boards. So I have two more traction boards in addition to the ones mounted on the truck. So those we typically level the trailer with. Um, they're also accessible when we're towing the trailer. If we need four, we can grab them. So the awning was probably our biggest change in addition in this phase. So it uses Compact Canting Camping Concepts sells these brackets as well. And then you just need the tubing. So we attach that up there. And this is the 230 Bushman awning. So it's the eight foot by eight foot, and then you set the height. So we've got it at seven feet tall. And it has the light suppression technology fabric so it's cool under here but then whenever you touch it it's pretty warm we do have I'll include um, a picture and some videos since it's just a one night trip here I don't have it but there is an enclosed room that zips in that we typically bring and set up but I wasn't gonna set it up for one night um, that is I know Caroline's favorite feature right now with the trailer once you get to camp and you have like your private enclosed area um to journal at night or just get out of the elements um the last couple times it's been cold and windy and running the buddy heater in there has been really great so that's really the big modifications to the trailer um, still don't have any intentions of adding power or water to the trailer since the truck kind of supports all of that. Um, keep it simple, less stuff to fail, um, and if for some reason life changes and 
we no longer use the trailer and need to switch to a vehicle we can pull the awning off we can pull the tent off everything is universally accessories across the, the truck and the trailer is kind of our mindset we kept with um, single use camping gear as little as possible something that can be used for years to come and multiple different applications is kind of our mindset that we've stuck with thanks for watching see you on the next adventure